The fight is done. We lost. Oh my gosh, a female lead in a Star Wars movie. And then the, the trailer for Rogue One comes out, and it's another female lead. Oh my gosh, how unfair. We've had probably like two million straight film cinematic roles where men have been leads, and now we've done two in a row that are women. This is it's very like patriarchal, so it was kind of cool to have like this sort of woman-centered figure. People have told me that it's the gayest Star Wars, and I'm frankly into it. My daddy, daddy, dad, and the Bob Iger is all like, no, it's going to be my dad. Meanwhile. Which is unfortunate because the premise for the show as a whole isn't even that bad. And while certain spoilers have allegedly been released for episode three that has some of the fandom feeling a certain way, again, as mentioned before, it's more of the execution for me, not the idea on paper. So I will judge that when I see it all play out. I don't want to say that this will be my last Alkalite video before the finale, but if it is, well, I guess I'll see you in the finale. Last Alkalite video before the finale. Last Alkalite video before the finale. Fuck. <laughs> oh God. Yo, I'm not going to lie. We as an audience, as Star Wars fans, might actually be cooked. Don't get me wrong. As you all literally just heard. As someone who already knew the spoilers for episode 3 and pretty much talked about it with my mates and what our reaction would more than likely be like if executed poorly, which I guess at this point is just something that I should expect from this joke of a studio, and what makes it even more unfortunate is yet again I find myself at the clown table as the optimist of my friend group and, in this case, the fandom of an entire brand, I mean, you would think someone would have to play that devil's advocate because it's simply brain rotting from an audience's POV the route that this franchise has taken over the last decade, to a point where it almost seems comical and almost purposeful with the amount of wrong turns that they have taken. I iterated that I am someone who does not bag on an idea before seeing how that idea plays out on screen within the context of the narrative because I am someone who does genuinely believe in execution over idea. Rather that ends up being an idea for a big budget mega IP movie or TV show, or just some indie zero budget video game like Only Up. And obviously rather that works out or not is up to said people's idea, not us, the audience. We as an audience simply can only be asked to ingest cinema, shit on a screen, and everything that comes in between those two extreme ends of entertainment. And I guess like the bloke that I am, I was subconsciously kind of holding out a semblance of hope that the third episode of The Acolyte wasn't going to be as toontown of an episode as advertised. Because again, for an idea that has been floating around the desolate wasteland of creativity that is Disney Studios, and a show that has been in production for half of that time, you would think that we as a team a conglomerate of people with IQs higher than what you would believe would be higher than a Stanley Cup could and would execute on their own idea better than this. And it's funny because I'm realizing that even as I'm reading this, that I am kind of laughing and smiling at myself instead of being angry or frustrated or disrespected at what I just visually was asked to ingest, which might just mean the insanity is starting to set in but what is a fan supposed to do at this point? When I was watching last week's two episode special, for all of the negativity and positivity that we were going to see surrounding this show, as you can see and more than likely predicted with the dramatic divide in the critic and audience scores, and that was before all of the spoilers came out for episode 3. I knew that we were in for a clusterfuck, but for all of the nitpicking from certain fans, to all of the glazing from certain shills, the only question I found myself having when those dumbass end credits started to roll was who was this show even made for? If not for the core audience and not for the casual fans, then who is it made for? And while the comment section of that video definitely made it loud and clear who the target audience is, and just simply pointing out the fact that everyone's favorite devoid of logic director Leslie Headland was pretty much throwing it in our faces who this show was made for, the best way that I could really sum this up is that The Acolyte is a show made for Leslie Headland. Leslie Headland is the audience for this show, and the show has one fan, and that fan is very, very happy.
But with that being said, all of this yapping has just led us to the main point of this video. Because while in the last video, and I guess kind of just now, we discussed and recapped who this show was made for, the question that I now as a fan of this franchise is faced with is how to face a brand that is a foreshadowed disaster. And don't get me wrong, while you might be thinking to yourself, what do I mean by that? The main issue with Star Wars is the fact that the Acolyte Episode 3, at least so far, has been our main and most upfront narrative pushing, character development, and world building episode. The episode that was really supposed to display the vision of the creator and the talents of which he or she possesses. In a way, the best way I can describe it in my own terms is that this was supposed to be a foundation episode. An episode in which the premise was even started, the idea that eventually found itself into becoming a $200 million show. But from an audience's POV, it just seems like yet again we have wasted valuable resources, time, and money on a product and for people working on that product that lack the talent, intelligence, creativity, self-awareness, and pedigree to even be mentioning a brand such as Star Wars to add to their resumes. And it's unfortunate because this episode was just another episode to add to the case study of people employed by Disney Star Wars that cannot write for shit. Not intelligent characters, an engaging narrative, an interesting world, or an immersive stakes or tense situations. It just comes off as incredibly disingenuous and disrespectful to the people that you need in order to keep green lighting new products. But what is even the point of greenlighting new products, at least from an audience's point of view, when again this franchise has just become riddled with foreshadowed disasters? While obviously it is their own fault and people like Kathleen have paved their own path of dumbassery when it comes to this IP, so I don't have to reiterate all of the terrible choices that she has made for this brand, the Star Wars name and IP as a whole is at a point where I believe the casual audience is no longer invested in what Kathleen is cooking. And the core audience is so jaded to a point of either, I would say 25% of the people hate watching, and the other 75% have already moved on to the other side of the fence of sanity after the shitstorm on a screen that was Kenobi. The main umbrella problem that Disney has faced since the purchase of this brand is that we simply, yet again by shown by episode 3, we don't know what we're doing. We don't have qualified people to write scripts. We don't have qualified people to enact competent choreography. We don't hire qualified people to write engaging or unique characters. We don't hire qualified people enough to entrust this brand to and to respect the groundwork that came before. We don't hire anybody that helps contribute to the cause or the narrative that Star Wars or the people involved with this brand care about its audience. And when you don't care about your audience, and for lack of better words, alienate and divide your audience for years on end, what you have is the lowest rated, and most importantly, again, the lowest watched production for the Star Wars era. And I don't really see how Disney expects that to change without accountability, and honestly, I would say an entire change in foundation at this point. But with a show like The Acolyte, it kind of gives off the impression that Disney Star Wars isn't really in the game of reshaping their image. It's more of a stand on business mentality. But when that mentality is leading to a decline in business, then when does it end? And while during the last video, I felt like I had more optimistic words for you on how this show or vision could play out. Unfortunately, I don't have much for you in this instance or even myself. As I said at the beginning, I think we as a core audience might be cooked because this is what Disney wants Star Wars to be. This is what Disney wants Star Wars to represent. This is the quality that Disney is comfortable delivering to its audience. And with the first original show set outside of the Skywalker saga, it's now become relatively obvious that this is the name of the game when it comes to the studio, this franchise, and this once storied IP. So I guess all I have to say is congratulations to Disney and a special and personal congratulations to everyone's favorite dork, Kathleen Kennedy. Not only have we reduced a brand and what was the most lucrative franchise in the history of cinema into the sunken place, but have gotten to a point that we have become the biggest clowns in this transaction. Yes, us the audience looking in the mirror as clowns. 
I don't know how the fuck it happened, but now I have found myself in a position that is almost just as shit as this show. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.